it's Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm. This project is called the Button Box Throw Pillow. And the reason why it's called Button Box is because we're sort of raiding the button box. I've chosen a scheme of red and white buttons because it, this is going for the Cozy Corner. And if you've been following the Cozy Corner mini series that I'm doing, we know everything's going to be red and white. So I have inherited several buttons, button collections, from different people and elderly family members and plus I, I pick them up all over the place at estate sales and flea markets and antique stores and all that and it's always exciting to see what I get so I went through my button and I pulled out everything that was red and white and I have all kinds of different vintage ones and big ones and some that I'm never going to use on anything else and picked them all out and I took a picture of sort of how I want to do it so I'm, I'm gonna print that picture out when I'm sewing them on so I can sort of follow where I put the ones that were the special ones like this little heart and stuff so the first step you need to do is you need two 24 by 24 inch pieces of fabric and my since this front is going to be the decorative the part with the buttons no one's really going to want to use that as a throw pillow so I picked another piece of fabric and I have this real pretty piece it's vintage it has like this braiding sort of turkey work but it looks like white on white turkey work sort of and I don't even know how well you can see that on camera but I had several pieces of it and they were like like someone had used them because you used to be able to buy this in the early 1900s you could buy this by the yard and the bolt you could do all kinds of things make tablecloths and linens and stuff with it so it was some odd pieces like it was left over from someone's project and they've been sitting around waiting for my project so this is going to be the back and this is nice and soft and this can be the part you could turn the pillow around and use this part of it so that's going to be my back I thought about for a moment to use more Chanel on the back but I used the Chanel if you watch the other cozy corner the gusseted pillows I used the Chanel so I wanted this is going to be a one-off pillow that's not going to have a matching one because we're going to have another there'll be one other throw pillow that we'll do that's also a one-off so this is just a fun project to do so you have your two 24 inch pieces now I have this is a piece of white muslin and I'm recovering a brown sort of Chanel pillow that went with the couch so I've doubled my fabric but I'm going to base this together just so you couldn't see through the pillow beneath it but if you're if you're stuffing a pillow and making a new one you won't need to do this so the first thing I've done is cut a shape that I wanted to use and I toyed the, with the idea of doing a circle and then doing you know red a stripe white stripe but it looks sort of like a bullseye so I didn't really want the bullseye so I just came up with the heart and what I might do is do red rickrack around the heart like I did the hearts, the Chanel hearts, if you remember from the other video, just sort of to tie it all in. But since I already did the two Chanel hearts on the gusseted one, I thought, well, I'll use a heart on this one too. And I know where my blue tailoring pencil is, but I don't want to dig underneath. It's in a sewing kit under the, the a big stack of fabric. So... I'm just going to use a pencil. I usually use it's like a blue chalk pencil on white and then I have a white chalk pencil to use on other co colors. But, so I'm just going to trace around it. Yeah, I'll cover this up with buttons so it won't be seen. My outline. And I'm just going to go around and touch it up. It's not real dark. This would be my guideline and then I'll just arrange my buttons I'm gonna hand sew all these so I have a picture and obviously I'll put the picture up so you can see it but I don't have my I didn't print it off yet but I'm gonna arrange all of these these aren't the way I'm gonna be arranging them but I'm just showing you how it's gonna be so like you could just do it's all gonna be pretty random as far as the inner ones go I have special ones that have like little designs on them. I've got a little duck. 
kind of an angel. Just have really a lot of really cute ones that are all just red and white. If I put that like in the middle. And I'm just going to go around and sew them on. And, and I'll start with the perimeter. I'll go around and sew all the red ones, you know, all the red and white. I'm going to do it like red and white, red and white. When I get to the inner part of it, I might not, you know, be able to do it so precisely because I think I have more white than I did red. Some of these are really, oh, this is a really heavy pearl coat button. Sew all those and then I'll go around and I'll sew all the inside ones and these are all going to be hand sewn obviously and I don't think you want to watch me do all that so I'm going to go hand sew all that and and then I'll come back and we'll look at it and then we'll construct the pillow. Okay so I finished with the buttons and I will have to say that I vastly underestimated the amount of buttons I was going to need for this. It just seemed like when I laid them out I didn't need as many but when I started doing it, I wanted to fill up more holes. So what I've done is I found, a, I had a piece of stiffer, I didn't have any interfacing, so I had a stiffer piece of felt, so I turned it to the white. And I added one more piece of white fabric, so I'm really concerned about that pattern or the brown of the pillow showing through. So I did that, and I'm, I pinned it all together. And I had this red, red, red rickrack piece. So I'm not going to try to sew this on the machine <laughs> because with the uh, buttons, it would be just a needle break and nightmare. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to hand sew this rickrack through the layers of fabric and through that thicker piece of felt that I'm using like an interface just to give it a little bit of support because the buttons make the fabric heavier and I don't want it to like when I put it on the pillow I don't want it to weight it down and like fall forward if you know what I mean because of the buttons so that felt's going to give it a little bit of stiffness there. Some of the, all the little buttons I used. Got a lot of really old antique bone and ivory and pearl type buttons, shell buttons. I had a lot of ceramic ones. That just turned out cute. So there's the heart. So let's construct the pillowcase and get this on the okay, pillow. Okay, remember I had this piece of vintage fabric I was going to use for the back. Straight stitch around it and then I'm going to zigzag around it. Okay, I've got the, remember we're doing the, we, I had the pillow I was like making it for, so I got the pillow in there, and here's the decorative stitching on the back on my vintage piece of fabric, and there's our heart on the front, I'm just going to tighten it. Okay, 
And there's the edge of it. There's the pillow. So this is another unique throw pillow that lets you use up buttons that are sitting around in your button box. It's a nice way to display unique buttons. Like I said, like the, I have like a lot of those antique ones and I had a lot of decorative ceramic ones and it's just fun. And I just choose that color scheme and work that shape, whatever. You don't have to do a heart. You could do a sailboat. That would be cute. If red, white, and blue, do a sailboat triangle and a rectangle or, you know, just simple. Just stick with a simple shape design, outline design, and then fill it in and use up those buttons and have fun doing it. So this has been another throw pillow for the cozy corner. I'm glad you could join us for this button box project. Thank you for joining us today, Canberra.